Welcome back to Udavala in Sweden. It's round 12 of the FIM MX2 Motocross World Championship and we're live again for race two. 34 different winners have stood on the top step of the podium in all classes over the years here at Udavala. And in manufacturer's wins, KTM lead the way with 13 and Jeffrey Hurlings is on course for becoming the 14th winner for the Austrian manufacturer if he can win moto number two here this afternoon. We're about an hour north of Gothenburg in the southwest of the country. And the circuit itself, we've never been here before, never seen it before. It's actually situated in a rock quarry, so the ground naturally hard packed. This year, though, the organizers deciding to tweak things a little bit, relocating the position of the start gate and the finish areas. And we're also running in the original direction, all the opposite way round to what we've been doing in previous years. The hill people are here in their tens of thousands once again, making a noise, adding to what is already a very unique Grand Prix location. And there is Andrea De Vizioso there in the white t shirt. Of course, uh, a Ducati rider in MotoGP. Let's quick look at the track, 1,530 metres long. Slightly downhill first turn, generally flat though, but into a, a bank, fairly wide first left-hand turn, through where the old finish line used to be. They've filled all that in to get it right up to the level, and uh, this track proving once again to be quite a difficult circuit. It's pretty choppy, pretty bumpy, and if you missed it earlier, here's what happened in MX2, race one. Gate dropped, or tried to drop, and uh, the 151 of Harry Kulas and the 122 of Dylan Ferrandis got caught out. They tried to go too early, and it was Jose Boutron who snatched the foxhole shot, but it was the 92 of Valentin Guillo who lost the front end in what was an eternal slide. Managed to get propped up, though, by Jeffrey Hurlings as he came through on his way to take the lead from Boutron. The two rock star Suzuki's were well placed in the first part of the race in seventh and eighth position as everyone else tried to close down. Tim Geiser had a terrible start. He was about 12th or 13th on the very first lap. Valentin Guillo, though, battled with the 911 of Jordi Tixier in the... That battle would go all right the way to the flag. Dylan Ferrandis ran into the back of the Norwegian, Evan Havey, as he tried to make up for that poor start, but just left himself with more work to do and was down and out in around 25th when he got going. Tim Geisler, though, charged through the field, put that pass on the 92 of Valentin Guillo, who retook it back, but those two would argue for the next three or four laps over fourth position. It started to rain as well around about the halfway mark in the race making a very hard slick surface, very greasy indeed. Eventually, 9-11, Jordi Tixier went past the 92 of Valentin Guillo on lap nine. That put him into fourth place, pushing this guy here into fifth, and then he would come under pressure from the 33 of Julian Lieber. Lieber would eventually go on to finish in sixth position, but Jeffrey Hurlings was two or three seconds a lap quicker than his rivals and soon established himself at the head of the field. Didn't have any problems at all with the conditions, but Jose Boutron, the number 17, was caught by the number 23 of Christophe Charlier on the factory Yamaha. That was a battle for seventh place. Again, that would run for about six or eight laps in the midpoint of the race. Boutron on the silver action KTM there, number 17 of Spain, would eventually find himself dropping down to eighth place. 59, Alexander Tonkov found himself getting up into, uh, well, just past the Suzuki of Lieber and then fell. So he uh, went from 11th to 10th and then picked himself back up in 11th position. 461, though, Roman Fevre on the Wilvo Nastan. Husqvarna put in a spirited performance. He closed back in on the Gary Baldy HRC Honda of the 243 here, Tim Geiser. That was about for second in the closing laps of the race, but eventually that second place did go to the Slovenian Tim Geiser, with this guy here, Roman Fevre, having himself for third. Jordi Tixier was fourth, and Valentin Guillo on the standing construct. KTM was fifth, but Jeffrey Hurlings, in the end, was, as we said, a convincing winner in moto number one, going on to take the chequered flag 44 seconds clear of Tim Geiser on his Red Bull KTM.
So business as usual then for Jeffrey Hurlings and Amy Dargan is down on the line and she's talking to Roman Fevre. Time for MX2 Race 2. Roman Fevre joins me. Roman, we're going to have a word about Race 1 because you had second place there for almost half of the race, but we missed what happened to allow Tim to pass. Yeah, I make a small mistake. Uh, yeah, I crashed after uh, the downhill and uh, yeah, I lost some times and uh, guys there passed me. And uh, after I tried to, to catch him again, it was not easy. Uh, I changed a little bit my lines uh, in some corners, so it was better. But yeah, I didn't find the way back, and um, yeah, just I finished third. It's it's uh, it's good. I take some points on Tixia and Ferrandis again, but uh, yeah, just uh, now uh, I hope I don't crash and I take a good start and I can finish on the podium. Five Grand Prix left. Where would you like to finish this season? Yeah, now uh, yeah, I'm really sorry for him, but uh, Tonus is injured, so. Uh, now we can fight for the second position in the championship, so uh, yeah, I will do my best and uh, I hope I can, I can take this place. Thanks, Ram. Best of luck. Uh, let's carry on down and have a word with Luke Stike if he's around, because it was really great to see him in race one. Luke, I'm just going to borrow there. I was just telling everyone that it was great to see you in race one, take that great start and ride up there with some of the top guys. What happened towards the end of the race? I was just uh, end of lap one, just something happening to my bike, but uh, went back to the pits at the, after the race and obviously there was nothing wrong. It was just me again, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to try to do the same thing in the second race and uh, do my best off the start and uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks, Luke. Best of luck for race two. Right, it's back to commentary. Here's how the riders line up then for MX2 Race 2. Jeffrey Hurling's on pole from his qualifying race. And after winning Moto number one earlier on in the afternoon, Jeffrey Hurling's now has 19 race victories so far in 2014. And with Arno Tonus, the CLS Kawasaki Monster Energy rider, again out through injury this weekend due to that shoulder injury he picked up in Germany two weeks ago, last time out. Hurling's lead at the top of the championship table is now 130 points. And Tonus is going to be in danger of losing that second place inevitably because two points behind him is the second of the Red Bull KTM's Jordi Tixier. Nine points further back is Roman Fevre on the Wilvo Nastan factory Husqvarna. Dylan Ferrandis on the CLS Kawasaki Monster Energy Machine. The number 122 is 26 points further adrift in fifth place. And just 17 behind him is the Slovenian, the Garibaldi HRC Honda rider of Tim Geiser. And it's really those guys now where we need to focus our attentions. Dylan Ferrandis there, 122, will be looking for a better start. Well, he'll be looking to get out of the start with everybody else to give himself half a chance at least of challenging for a decent point score in moto number two. Jeremy Siwa there, the Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe rider. Likewise for him, he will be looking at trying to maintain some decent level of consistency. And the Suzuki finished in 10th place in moto number one. Riders getting ready to take their positions once again. There is Severbrul Yakov, just going through his little ritual. As everybody else pretty much lined up now, there is Tim Geiser, 2.43. And Jeremy Sewer, the 4.61 of Roman Fevre, 151, Harry Kules. Well, he tried to go way too early in moto number one. There's Andrea Davizioso, Ducati MotoGP rider, good friend of Tony Cairoli. And the uh, Marchetti uh, KTM team as well, which includes Ivo Monticelli. So he'll be looking for his friends to do well this weekend. Monster Energy 5 second board is up and we're getting ready to go racing here. The gate drops now. Everybody away cleanly this time. Jeffrey Hurlings or is it Tixier? His teammate getting a good run. It looked like well, it's close between Guio and Geiser. Geiser running out wide on the outside of turn one. But tries to slot neatly up the inside. Goes past Libra immediately and Luke Stike. As everybody dives downhill into turn two and three. But it's the Red Bull KTMs, Linus Stern, Jeffrey Hurlings leading, Jordi Tixier, Valentin Guio third, February fourth, Boutron is in fifth place. Then in sixth, we've got Tonkov, Siwa, Geiser, Ferrandis ninth, Pauls Jonas didn't finish the first race, 
on that 741 just going through there. He is in 10th, and it's Julian Lieber, Luke Stipe, Robert Just, Sever Bruljakov, Charlier, Klingsheim, Crowdus, Kulas, Pocock, 19th, and Gortemarker in 20th position. Adam Wheeler joins me once again. Adam, uh, quite a uh, well, clean getaway this time around for the MX2 guys. Tonkov just almost going through the front door there, but a great start for Red Bull KTM, first and second, probably for the first time this year. Yeah, it's looking like that way for the overall even, isn't it, Paul? I mean, with Hurlings winning the first moto so comfortably, even 20 seconds faster than Tony Coiroli in the MXGP moto, so... Oh, Fevre up the inside of uh, Guia there. And Boutron as well, just hanging on to the back of that group. He had a little bit of a disappointing first moto, a disappointing season, I guess you could say, but he's starting to consolidate a little bit more the speed to hang in the top five. Just talking about disappointing, uh, Petr Petrov again, a poor starter, 26, Max Anstey, 28th position, and Thomas Covington, the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider, down there in 30 seconds. So a lot of work to do for some of those guys as they get ready to cross the strike for the first time. And uh, Thomas Covington's walking wounded, isn't he? Uh, pulled out of the German Grand Prix two weeks ago. Uh, broken bone in his foot, so hasn't ridden the bike for two weeks. There's another Kawasaki in the mix there. That's uh, Dylan Ferrandis. He was one of the ones that hit the gate in the first moto. I mean, really kind of ruined a potential podium this weekend, ball because uh, he was quick yesterday. Well, we'll see what these guys can do then as the race uh, develops. But Hurlings, Tixier, they are, what, two seconds apart at the moment. Valentin Guio third, Febvre fourth, Boutron fifth, Tonkov, and already Jeffrey Hurlings laying down the markers, fastest in the first sector which is to this point here. And look but at only... uh, Tonkov around the outside, boys. He's looking a little bit more feisty, this moto. Yeah, he only finished 11th in race one, but he had to work hard through the field as well, getting in a bit of an exchange there with the 17 of Boutron. Well, Boutron used to getting into the odd exchange, isn't he, every now and again? <laughs> looking like he's going back after the Russian around the outside there as they drop down the hill, but to no avail because Tonkov, whoa, he lost the front end going in, but oh, look at him whoa, whoa. fighting back, bouncing back, and taking the line away from Tonkov once again. Tonkov thinking, Come on, dude, this is like only the first lap. And look behind there, the back of there on the uh, red Honda, Tim Geiger, second place in the first moto, now just at the back of this gag, we must be looking, trying to say, oh, there's Fevra. And Geiser are almost getting caught in that as well as he went to go wide to slingshot around the outside. But Geiser, though, he had to do this as well in the first race. He had a poor start. He, you know, took a couple of laps to get to six, you know, by the time we get to the, the first official lap, but he was actually in around a similar place, 10th or 12th on the opening lap. And he had a hard charge, like you say, he got to second and what was a great ride for the Slovenian. Yeah, but then also he was helped by that rider there, Roman Fevre having a, another mistake, or I didn't actually see him go down. Did he go down and run off the track? But, uh, you know, the, the Patrick Husqvarna, I mean, that's summed up his season a little bit, hasn't it, Paul? Just the odd mistake here or there, and it's costing dear. Well, that's right, but um, Geiser, though, he won't care about that too much because he'll see the second of the Husqvarnas ahead of him, the number 59 of... Alexander Tonkov as they cross over the line this time around. Tonkov six, Geiser seven. Going backwards. And they're uh, pretty good at going backwards as well these <laughs> days, these uh, MX2 riders. Ferrandis, he gets a better start this time. He is in fifth position on the CLS Monster Energy Kawasaki there on the green machine, number 122. Hit the gate, him and... I don't know if you saw it, Adam, in the first race, but him and uh, Kulas just went too early. Yeah, Kulas was miles too early. I didn't know... Uh... I mean, he must have been uh, seeing some different numbers on the, uh, the board held up by the Monster Energy girls, I think. Ferrandis is, well, I was saying, you were saying Paul Boutron, I think he's just trying to make himself as wide as possible, isn't he? I'm yeah. really impressed by the way this track has changed. You know, yesterday was very flat, very stony, very pebbly, very difficult. But, you know, the guys have worked on it well because, you know, it's become a lot more choppy. Some of the reactions after the first moto, some of the riders were just like, they couldn't quite believe it was the same place in some areas. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice as well, isn't it? Riding in the opposite direction, the change is as good as a rest. But, you know, we're not coming here next year. Uh, after that, I'm not sure either. I guess we'll have to wait on, and see on the success of this one. But provisional calendar is out. This yeah. is not on it. But I think you know. the negotiations are, are going on, aren't they? Yeah. So that's, uh, I mean, this track has, or this Grand Prix has been part of the World Championship for... Since 2001, turn of the century. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the track's been reversed, well, changed direction twice in that time. So they, they, the guys are not afraid to make changes here at Udabala, which, you know, is not always possible with other circuits we see in Europe. Oh, oh guys, just getting on the run. How close is he to the board there? Yeah, and just running right. has moved through. Sorry, Paul. Randis up to fourth place now. Yeah, finding a way past Boutron, and Tonkov still trying to find a way through. Oh, as Randy mistake. outside, Sierra up the inside makes a mistake. Geiser uh, takes the position away and uh, stays in seventh position, but uh, dropping down the hill here. 91, Sierra, Fevre back on the charge again. Doesn't want to get this group 
you know, to, to lose too much distance and uh, obviously pull too far away from him. So Hurling's fastest man on track again, three and a half seconds clear of his teammate Tixie. Guio third on the 92. Ferrandis on the green, Kawasaki 122 is fourth. Boutra on the 17, now in fifth. Tonkov, the 59, just ahead of these guys here, is in sixth. The 243, the red Honda just disappearing out of shot. The Slovenian Tim Geiser is in seventh. And that's the three guys behind here. So Boutron, Tonkov, Geiser, then Siwa, Fevre and Charlier. Jonas in 11th now, ahead of Luke Stein, the Australian. Nice move, Fevre. Oh, sorry, Tonkov going on there. Yeah, Tonkov, obviously, uh, first lap, we saw him trying to make that pass around the outside. Tonkov and uh, Boutron making it very difficult for him. Down in this corner as well, took him wide on uh, first and second lap. Looks like to <laughs> try to do it again, but just hanging off that silver action KTM at the moment. Number 17, Boutron. A big hit from Febra there, just trying to pass the uh, factory Suzuki of Jeremy Sewer, the rookie this year. Signed oh, up again oh, for another. Oh, Geiser. Just keeping that upright, wasn't he? Yeah, he just no attraction. looking for lines. And in the first race, that was impressive from him as well. He refused to follow, was outside, inside, you know, in and out early of the turns, almost kind of super crossy, you know, going in, taking like a short apex and then dropping out and getting good smooth runs out of the, uh, the turns across relatively flat ground compared to the choppy bumps that everyone else was facing and I think we'll see a similar thing now in this second race but we've had an hour on the track to prepare the circuit not a lot of grading gone on just a little bit of watering yeah just some of the jump takeoffs needed some work um, but yeah just a fine example there Paul Tim Geiger with that yellow helmet there just trying to pass Jose Boutron what you were saying and I think the riders that are enjoying success on this track this weekend are showing that same kind of um, versatility, you know, when it comes to attacking the circuit. Kevin Strivos in the MXGP first motor, a prime example of that. Guys, oh, nicely done through there, cutting it really tight on in, on the entry and the exit through that uh, very narrow chicane at the end of pit lane, which is very fast through there anyway. But Boutron going to go defensive, as we've said before, riding a very wide silver action KTM, probably uh, the widest machine out there at times. And uh, Guy's just hunting his third podium of the season. Um, he's riding very much like he did in Germany two weeks ago, just very fluid and, you know, able to, to change line and, and, you know, course at will, really. And Febra just Ooh. still trying to get past Sewer there. Just trying to look for the Got other Suzuki. Oh. Julian Lieber had a, uh, equaled his career best in the first motor, but he's not even in the top 20 this no. time. And he's just flying there in the background over the... Uh the first tabletop within a couple of corners after the start, so a lot of work to do for uh, Julian Lieber. Some really wide lines there from Guy Chappell. I mean, is he taking risks, do you think? I mean... The thing is, if you follow, you're not going to find a way through, so you have to go wide, you have to be creative. Yeah, but if there's but that many riders behind you, open. exactly, you know, you're inviting someone just to scoop up your front wheel. Fevre won't hesitate. No, he won't. I'm not saying implying he's a dirty rider, but, you know, he's had it done to him enough times. I mean, this is one of the nice traits of MX2 racing, isn't it? Learning by example, then, Roman Fevre. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's last year in the class, so you think you would have it by now well Fevre looking for a way back past the 243 of Tim Geiser this is obviously going to be the battles for uh, well anywhere from Top fourth five, place yeah. down isn't it yellows waving over there in the background over one of the tabletop jumps so they're back in again now so nothing too serious oh Over the finish line, four laps complete. Jeffrey Hurling's eight, well, seven seconds clear of Jordi Tixier, but behind him, a whole freight train of riders led by the 17 of Jose Boutron in sixth place. He's got the 243, the Honda there of Tim Geiser of Slovenia in seventh, Roma Febre, the 461 in eighth, the 91 of Jeremy Sua in ninth, and the 23 of Charlier in tenth, as once again Adam Wheeler, Slovenian rider. Geiser looking to go wide to find a way past Boutron, who is taking the shortest route through every part of the racetrack. Yeah, and he has to do it because, like, uh, just ahead, um, Alexander Tonkov taking half a second on that lap. He's already starting to take away. Oh. Boutron almost having to shut off a little bit there. Oh, 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 going to oh, run him wide. Oh, oh. You see yellows or there's do we history. see two bikes? No. <laughs> and there's history there. So, <laughs> Oh, from Spain. <laughs> Last lap, about four corners to go, I know. And just uh, dumped um, who's on his name now? Husqvarna rider. Fevra. Fevra. Dumped him off the podium that day. So. Yeah. Yeah, Fevra's had that a few times this year, twice in Valkenswald uh, in terms of moto finishes, but he did get on the podium that day, of course, in the overall classification. But these two guys, they're setting the pace here, aren't they, in this pack of riders chasing down Dylan Ferrandis. Yeah, all this the battle for sixth place on the edge of the group. Jeremy Sewer just with Christoph Charlier. Noticing still a little bit of pain in that left knee after an operation 
only four weeks ago he's been training getting back up to race speed on that factory Yamaha Tomkoff's riding good this time around look at him he's gone uh, got Hurlings Tixier they're leading the way we owe four seconds off of uh, the second place rider and then uh, look at that trying to go up the inside once again 461 of Roman Fevre on that Wilvo Nastar and Husqvarna looking for a way past Geiser here he's found a bit of extra speed hasn't he Fevre 46 on that last lap that's two seconds better than his previous and Tomkov as well just as you were mentioned a moment ago did said his fastest lap of the race yeah not riding relaxed at the moment I don't think I said just spending too much time looking behind wondering about Roman Fevre where the challenge is going to come from not able to concentrate on his own on his own race here he needs to look ahead to the other Husqvarna really doesn't he yeah easier said than done on a circuit it's probably the most challenging riding uh, experience for these guys because of the hard slick nature the square choppy bumps you know the water that's gone down before the race it rained about the midway point of the first race as well, making it very, very greasy racetrack. And obviously the back ends are dancing around a lot on these bikes anyway because of those square edge bumps. And um, you know, the focus has to be so high. I think it's just the mix, isn't it? It's a replay of the style. Like you said, everybody getting away well this time. It's just the mix between those really bumpy, ruddy sections, but then also like, you know, the, the completely flat, berm-free, rut-free corners as well, where you just have to keep the thing up, upright and, you know, not have to wrist drifting or spinning it out for it's just uh geyser was well placed yeah. there and then he lost a bunch of places didn't he difficult to call that foxhole shot <laughs> either guio or any one of those two red bull oh, ktm made it but uh, yeah fever has gone through sixth place so maybe just taking a slightly wider approach into that right hand turn before that little you know drop down and, and that was enough for Fever to steal the march and go through. And the top of the picture that was Tonkov fighting for fourth place With on Guio. the yeah these guys are closing them down because that gap wasn't that big. Uh, wasn't that small, if you know what I mean, uh, at the start of that previous lap. So, uh, Hernings, Tixier, there, 11 and a half seconds. Then Ferrandis, we wait for him to come over the line. What's the gap between Tixier and Ferrandis? Five seconds. Then we've got Guio, three seconds back. Then, after that, it's here. Look, Tonkov, Fevre, Geiser closing in. The good news is, Adam, that 17 and a half minutes plus two to go. There's still a, lap, a lot of action out on track in this front bunch of riders. Yeah, and the good thing is as well is that the lap times are changing around all the time. Fever just done a 145 now. That was his best. He's lowered it from a 48 to a 46, now 45. So everybody's still like running, you know, they're fluctuating their speed. So it could really change things up. But Tonkov, I think if he makes this move up to fourth, that'll probably be uh, best of the season, isn't it? He hasn't ended the top three so far. That downhill section there, riders were able to single double there first few laps of practice yesterday, but as the weekends wore on and the track has deteriorated. Oh. Oh. I have to say, in the first moto, Alexander Tonkov made a few cheeky moves. There was like uh, some flexibility when it comes to interpreting well, the course. The thing is, okay, if that was a one-off move, you go, well, he never gained or never lost a position. But if he's doing that lap in, lap out, I know race direction would be looking at that. And they could look down, you know, look down on that. And that's going to be costly because he completely, you know, if he landed and bounced and had to go off the track, fine. Yeah. But we'll that's see next time issue, around. That's isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's, you know, that's avoidance. But if he's using it to gain advantage, like you said, then he's going to be hit with some sort of time or positional penalty. Yeah. But look at Febre. He's really on the move, isn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. He's left. He's left Geiser behind him in seventh position. And, uh, and that comes down to confidence with tyres on the hard slick nature. You know, as a uh, Frenchman, and they're used to riding tracks like this. Think of Ernay, think of Saint Jean, think of anywhere. Pernod La Fontaine, probably the closest to this place. Uh, oh, oh. We've not been there in a while, but <laughs> both guys on those Huskies getting hung up in that corner. Just allowing Guio on the standing construct 92 KTF just to get away just that little bit. It's really quite loose in sections, that soil, isn't it? It's quite stony as well. I mean, it, you just have to watch the behavior of the bikes to see it pop in and, and, and shoving the riders out in different shapes. And then because of the, the work gone on down past pit lane, that is relatively softer material. Just watch this here. Gets offline, does he, on the takeoff? Well, I think he just forgot where mm. he was and... Uh, well, we'll watch it again on the next lap. Yeah. You know, he came out wanting to jump across to land on the left, but... Here Maybe he just overjumped. Same uh, corner coming up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Maybe. Is a... Right, out of the corner again. No, definitely uh, might have been a one-off. Yeah. Benefit of doubt. So the two will vote in the Stan Huskies then. Pretty much like they were at the opening round in Qatar and Thailand and Brazil. Pretty much locked together. Haven't seen that for a, for a while from these guys. Best of mates, they get on by not speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Most cordial friendships. Yeah. And Charlie are just looking up for a little space there. On the blue Yamaha. 
And then Paul Jonas here had a miserable time in moto number one, down in 11th at the moment. So uh, the Marchetti KTM uh, guy rumoured for bigger and better things next year. Yeah, it was a uh, slot next to Jeffrey Hurlings, perhaps. I uh, was lucky enough to grab an interview with Jeffrey on uh, Saturday, actually, and said, you know, this could be something we see a lot of next year. And another season in MX2, and he, we just haven't seen any TV pictures of him, have we? Mm. I mean, he's, uh, what, what distance over Jordi <laughs> Tixier? Oh, Fevre looking for a move down the inside of his teammate. A little bit of a love tap, possibly, in that left-hander. As uh, Tonkov got out of shape on the approach. Just coming down the hill, Fevre here. Kevin Strybos was so fast through this part of the track in MXGP race one, swinging it round the outside and just not backing off. Just Jeremy giving himself. Horvick said the same thing. He said he couldn't believe the way that Stry the speed Strybos was carrying through that section, especially because yeah. he landed in the bumps. Yeah, but he's just landing offline out of those bumps and able to carry that speed. Fevre, yeah, he oh. got out of shape, and I was about to say Fevre, and uh, obviously he's getting pitched. Over the uh, the jump there, just saw him out the corner of the uh, the camera just before we switched the corner, and Fevre then out of sixth place. So the biggest talking point of the race so far, Adam, because uh, Roman Fevre, who was third in Moto number one, now at risk of not getting on the podium. The second fastest rider on the track has just made his second costly error of the Moto. Yeah, bars bent as well. As he dropped down there, I just saw the back end getting out, and it just started to lift as we went past him, and then as we panned back, we just saw what we saw. So. Uh, it was a strange place to crash. I mean, unless it just got some sort of strange oh, kill. Oh, uh, past Guio. Yeah. Tonkov, so for fourth place. So Guio then, lighting it up on the slick surface, coming out of that right-hander. No traction whatsoever. Tonkov going through in a fourth. And he's now the lead Husqvarna rider in this MX2 race two. Fourth place, Paul, you've got your mound of papers here. Is that going to be a personal best for Tonkov this year? I don't think he's had maybe a top five, top six at best. Tonkov, he got a fifth. He's had a couple of fifths, actually. Yeah, he's had four or five fifth-place finishes. Not in the top Never four. a fourth. Not this year, anyway. Thirds and seconds last year. A couple of podium visits, of course. Still some way to go. And also Dylan Ferrandis is at the top of the picture there in third place. This is the kind of result we expected for Ferrandis in the first moto. So hitting that gate has really, you know, chewed things up for the Frenchman. Yeah, there is Ferrandis. Kind of hit a bit of a lull, hasn't he, mid-season, Dylan Ferrandis, after a blistering start in Qatar. It, yeah, it's been a case of silly mistakes. Silly mistakes have really just stopped him being in podium contention. Yeah. We're just looking at Tonkov's progress. Again, you know, the best overall finish for him, sixth overall. So we'll keep an eye on that as the day goes on, as the race goes on. As ridiculous as it sounds, it's kind of like first, first season as a factory rider and a pro for Tonkov. So I think he's still learning how to get to grips with doing, you know, an 18, 17, 18 round Grand Prix season. Yeah, well, with... Uh, just over 11 and a half minutes to go. Hurling still leads away. This guy here, Ferenis, in third. Just looking at some of the lines there that Ferenis is using, going wide into the little knuckle of dirt there just to square off and, and get, in a road race time, get on the fat part of the tyre where the, nob the nobles can really dig into the dirt just to get himself that uh, propel forward, you know, for the next jump. Yeah, you're definitely not going to see any kind of, like, handlebar drags in the, in the sort of around this track, are you? No. I mean, well, it's changed, as we mentioned before, so much, but that, that distinctive kind of Udavala dirt that, you know, can really be so dusty and also kind of soft and fine and shifting is, is firmly in place. Yeah, Tixier here, 9.11, is, what, 17 seconds down on his teammate. Still a Red Bull KTM 1-2, though, and uh, Tixier Moto number 1-4, so this would be good for the podium for him, wouldn't it? Second at the moment, I would think. I'll tell you what, it would be a memorable weekend because... If they clean up in MX2, uh, Tony Cairoli can do the job in MXGP, and then also they took victory in you know the AMA Outdoor Pro Nationals in, in, in the USA. So you know, yeah, it could Kenny's be, doing uh, all right out there, isn't he? Yeah, leading the championship for those world who say it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> this straight here is so bumpy because it's still relatively soft, you know, with a lot of dirt being moved around to make way for the new start finish area. And uh, that was so gnarly through there yesterday. But this morning you could have rolled a bowling ball down there. Yeah. You know, it was as flat as. But it's not long, though, is it? No. <laughs> We've got that to come a little Whoa, bit later on in the year. Yeah, August. some some real big sandy tracks coming up. Lomo, of course. Uh, We've got I think next, next weekend. Week. It's very kind of shallow, hard, hard sort of base, but you know, sand all the same. But this guy here. Rumours, uh, well, around all over the place at the moment. I had Stefan Evitz on our uh, TV studio show, MXGP TV studio show yesterday, said we haven't signed him for MX2 next year, and they are looking at options, so 
you know, Jordi Tixier could well be on the move next year. And if he is, as we said, we've already mentioned the name that could be in the running for that. Jeffrey Hurlings leads the way here. Just over nine minutes plus two laps to go. MX2 race two. It's round 12 of the FIM MX2 Motocross World Championship at Uda Valley in Sweden. Running in the reverse direction. If you're just joining us and wondering about the unfamiliarity of the place here, Adam Wheeler on trackoffroad.com still with me as well. And uh, Adam, this weekend been pretty much a, a domination again from Jeffrey Hurling so far, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that style over the finish, new finish line jump there, Paul, just saying everything you need to know about Jeffrey Hurling's on his way. You know, can we talk about it with eight minutes to go to, a, a, is it 42 Grand Prix wins? Probably it will be, yeah, but at the same time, you know, in terms of double race wins and race wins, I mean, he's got 19 in the season for so far this year, you know, race wins, so this will be his 20th race win. It's just, he's 19 years old. Yeah. Um, I was saying to him yesterday in the interview I did with him that, you know, there's no other motocross athlete internationally on, on a global scale that has the kind of results at the level that he's posted. Yeah. Oh. Guia just losing a little bit of shape there at the end of the straight. This is for fifth place. Guys are closing in on the Swiss standing construct KTM rider. I think this will be the third step of the podium for Geyser if he can take that place. It ought second to be. Well, the... he was second in moto number yeah. one, wasn't he? So, be clear. Uh, just looking at work in the track. Yeah, and uh, he's a few points clear of Guia anyway. So even if he passes him now, Guia will remain in fourth, will he? No, Fevre probably uh, will take over fourth because uh, he will lose a couple of points in this little exchange. That's going to be Roman Fevre's position, really, isn't it? How many fourth places has he had this year? So, Fevre, one of those riders that you know people are still talking about in the paddock, Paul. He wants a 350 ride, which means a Husqvarna or a KTM for next year. but yeah. uh, Which is not a bad way to look at it, actually, because we see the talk is you know with the age 23 rule a lot of people out there will say yeah but it's too soon maybe some guys develop at different stages and ages and some are stronger and not as strong and so a 450 which is the majority majority bike you know honda suzuki kawasaki yamaha a 450 is probably too much too soon not sure what the rules and regulations are in terms of over a certain size capacity but as long as it's no more than a 450 so they could sleeve it down detune it to a 400 which um you know i guess now was uh, a well-known thing that kai Rowley ran in his first formative years in mx1 uh, on the 450 class but ktm like you say husqvarna and ktm the only two teams that really run anything smaller than a 450 legally in terms of what you can buy over the oh, counter guys you're on the attack yeah. now on the inside down the pit lane he's going to charge it as well no. but has to yield and so in that respect, Roman Fevre might just say, look, I'm riding good on a 250 at the minute. Why do I need to push on a 450 if a year on a, mix, you know, on a, on a 350 might sort of work for me just to gradually build my strength and stamina? Well, that was the theory behind KTM and Husqvarna's project with the 350, wasn't it? I mean, it's worked in exemplary fashion for Tony Cairoli winning the last five world championships in the mm -hmm. Premier class. But also riders like Kevin Strybos, you know, resurrecting his career in 2012 with essentially a, a privateer one. You know, out of what is now the you know Hitachi construction machinery KTM UK outfit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the bike can work, can't it? If it's set up. And Dean Ferris now riding a 250 in America, looking for a ride in GP again next year. Um, he's on the 350 this weekend and said that he's already up to speed on it. Likes it. Likes the way it revs, the way it handles. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a nice intermediate step, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why it was developed. And also for those who just feel that a 450 is always going to be too much, but Geyser chasing the dirt, burying that front end on that Honda, deep into the loamy stuff around the outside there as he goes in pursuit of the 92. Valentin Guio, oh, hard nice. on the brakes. He had a look across as well, didn't he? He's not shy. And we've said it before, haven't we? It's like, it was almost like the silent assassin, isn't he, Tim Geyser? Because... <laughs> To talk to, very nice, very unassuming, and very, very polite. Put yeah. a helmet on him, and he becomes uh, he's a Jekyll and Hyde kind of character, a completely different-natured uh, human being altogether. He just looks so capable on the bike. You know, he'd, I think he'll be a devastating big bike rider as well when he gets a bit older. Could be, yeah. 17 years old, you could probably say he's not sort of even fully grown yet. Yeah. I mean, if there's a rider in their mixed two pack that could really challenge Jeffrey Hurlings next year, then you'd like to think that Tim Geisher could make a little bit of a step up in level, whether it's fitness, experience, race craft, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, he's the man most likely, based on the evidence we've seen this year. And also HRC with their heavy involvement in MXGP and showing signs of getting involved in this 250 project here with Gary Baldy. 
a slightly quicker motorcycle perhaps, mm. a little bit better starting motorcycle, getting out of the gate, going with the front runners, a little bit more, you know, top end maybe. Suddenly you've got a bike that competes with a KTM, it's a full factory HRC 250 Honda, and that might also make the difference. It's the only one of its kind in the Grand Prix paddock. Yeah. So it's kind of been made for Tim, and uh, if he can keep... Oh, getting a bit loose. He's trying different stuff, but it's not really working. Oh, here we get in a Battle of France. Yeah. He's already takes his second place, and Dylan Ferrand is almost well. making a mistake. And uh, Tonkov closing in slightly. He's only a couple of seconds off of these two. This is Tixie in second, the 911 Red Bull KTM. Ferrandis on the CLS Kawasaki Monster Energy Machine behind him, 122, has whittled that gap right the way down to nothing. And then you'll just see any moment now, Tonkov just coming in, well, still a little bit far, probably just too far to bridge, I think. We're looking at potential teammates for next year, aren't we? Dylan Ferrandis, Damon Lee, Monster Energy, CLS Kawasaki, Jordi Tixier, heavily rumoured to be jumping on that green bike next year. And uh, Alex Tonkov as well, I think, uh, set to stay, Husqvarna? No, not, no confirmation yet. I thought we might have heard something from, from the team, you know, being in Sweden and a uh, big media activity based around the 2015 lineup this weekend. But, yeah. You know, and there's still, it's still relatively quiet when it comes to confirmation. Yeah, but he's not going to be at KTM, we know that. I spoke to Stefan, I asked him, put him on the spot at the end of the studio show yesterday. Quick fire, obviously people talking about Jeffy Hurling's re-signed Premix 2, why? He said, well, because he's still young and it's obviously that's why they hired him in the first place, to win championships and Cairo I guess they didn't realise at the time that he'd be so devastatingly fast and uh, successful. So they've just gone with that, and they've also realized that there's a lot of marketability, I guess, around, uh, this is what, not what he was saying, but we, outside of that, can yeah. assume marketability and winning races, bike sales, all of those kind of things. Um, asked him about if he, because his contract, Jeffrey Hurlings, ends at the end of 2015. If you were to keep him for 16, would you put him in MXGP? He said, yes, for sure we would. And But anyway, he'll be free at the end of next year anyway, so he can decide what he wants to do and go wherever he wants, if that's his choice. I think, you know, Jeffrey Hurlings would be one of the most sought-after riders from any team anywhere. Yeah. You know, just the record and, and, you know, the experience of what he's racking up and what he's doing and achieving in Europe is, is, is unparalleled. Sure. And, uh, you know, you can't forget that for KTM, they, they haven't lost an MX2 World Championship since 2008. No. So to safeguard that kind of MX2 dominance, it makes sense. For Hurlings as well, uh, in terms of his age, you could say, in terms of his record, which is very much a pride thing, you know, he really wants to stamp his name in the record books. Yeah. It makes sense to keep doing it where you're winning every week. It's more lucrative. There are numerous advantages. It just, uh, it's not the matchup everybody wants to see. No. But um, when he does go to MXGP in 2016, you know, maybe even with somebody like Ryan Villapoto in tow, it could be, you know, a fantastic show. Mm. And Tixie is doing a good job of staying in uh, second place, isn't he, Paul? I can't see Ferrandis actually getting near his rear wheel. No, and again, you know, he should have been a contender, shouldn't he, really? It's, I think, more mentally uh, taxing for him. The pressure to improve on his second place, to put himself in a position of saying, I'm going to challenge Jeffrey for the world title. Even when Hurlings was injured at the start of the year, couldn't even capitalise on, yeah. you know, his lack of fitness here. So nothing wrong a, with his fitness, I don't think. It was a slow start to the season. Like yeah. you say, it was just the, the, the mental side of it. And the fact that he couldn't immediately respond to Jeffrey struggling in the, in the initial rounds, um, you know, probably set him on a little bit of a downward trajectory for a while. So. And he had two second place finishes this year, to, uh, Jordi Tixier. First race in the Netherlands and first race at Matalie Basin. Had a few thirds but only one time second as well overall in the GP, two third place finishes in Majora. So he's, uh, he's been on the podium, what, four times in the last five yeah, rounds? Yeah, a handful of times now, isn't it, Tixie 8? But that's three GPs. Yeah. And then twice before that, Bulgaria, Netherlands. So uh, that was obviously the, the, the momentum for him. Getting on the podium, that took the pressure off a little bit. Your old adversary, uh, Jamie Dobb, just uh, commented in the, you know, the first mode MX2 that Jeffrey Hurling's maybe winning every moto, but it's such a joy to watch him ride, and you have to agree. Yeah, absolutely. And doing it again here. Jeffrey Hurling's, though, has so much skill on a motorcycle, and that's the thing. I had Todd Waters in here for the first MX2 race, and um, I said to him, you know, obviously being injured, watching from home, watching the odd race with the team coming to the races, doing his PR duties. What do you see he's doing that other people aren't doing? He said it's the speed that he carries everywhere, into corners, down places like this, through here, at the end of straights. He's just on it for longer, basically, that is a long and short of it all. So 
Ferrandis just dropping back a little bit here now. Three seconds, so Jordi Tixier responding well to the threat of the Kawasaki rider splitting up the Red Bull domination in this second race. And Tonkov may be starting to close in on Ferrandis, possibly. I mean, you also do wonder how things are organised at Red Bull KTM, whether Jordi Tixier has been asked to ride different kind of material or different engine or something like that, because on the face of it, you'd say, well, why? You know, mm. Why would you leave a team like that? Why would you leave a motorcycle and with the resources behind it? But, you know, we never really know the full story, and I guess it's up to Jordi to, to fill us in, you know, if he does decide, well, if he is going to join a different team, the whys and wherefores. But also, uh, yeah, Tixier doesn't have to ah, stay. There you go, yeah. the line again. And closing in on Ferrandis, so uh, we'll see on that one then. Um, but in terms of he hasn't got to go back, uh, he hasn't got to go up to MXGP, so that's not even an issue in terms of not even staying with them in that respect. But I guess they clearly feel that he's not performed and his contract is up for renewal, and they're looking at maybe newer, younger blood. They've got hurlings that can continue that win streak, and they feel maybe that someone like a um, Paul Jonas, for instance, who's down in 12th on the Marchetti KTM, which is not a patch on the factory bike, with his pedigree of winning FIM Junior and World 125 titles and 85cc and maybe even 65cc, he is a star in the making, very much in the same mould of Jeffrey Hurlings, for instance. Yeah, and I think it would be the same philosophy that when KTM took Tixie initially, you know, it was a case of, OK, we have our strong riders in MX2, uh, where we're going to look next, let's try and build them up. So by the time Hurlings does move on, you'd kind of assume that Jonas would develop into a rider they could bank on. Oh, Taking a right mess of that corner. <laughs> I didn't want to cut over you because, well, you didn't even need words to see no. what was going on there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's fighting hard, though, isn't he, Tonkov? Yeah, that's one of his criticisms in there. He, has he had the fitness and the stamina to go all the way to the end of motos? And that's something he's picked up on in the second half of the season. So this is definitely his best GP yet. Yeah. Actually, where is he um, GP-wise overall, Alex Tonkov? In seventh. So uh, was was he was 11th be... in the first moto, wasn't it? Yeah, seventh again. He was sixth overall in GB, so it's not his best overall performance. That's February. He's going to be disappointed, you know? Yeah. That top three there was for the taking in both races. Third in moto number one, wasn't he, February? Couldn't find a way past Geiser in the closing stages. Looked like he took his hand off, took his foot off the gas when it started to rain. It was getting a little bit slick track, too, uh, too much slick track for him. And but this guy is riding good, isn't he? Sever Bruljakov, uh, been given an opportunity by Gabriele Rinaldi at uh, JTEC Honda, and it's only for a few races. And there he is in tenth place at the moment. So good to see him there. He was 14th in Moto Number One, and outpacing once again Maxim Dupre. Oh, he was in moto number one. Dupre not even in the points in this second race. I don't know if he's got a problem or not. But Here's uh, Luke Steik. And uh, Julian Lieber has actually popped up on the screen after taking that uh, sixth, was it sixth in the first moto. And he's found a way past. So he's probably already up into 17th position now. And the seven, uh, 171 of Damon Graulis. On the standing construct. KTM, a couple of back markers in and amongst them as well. Christopher Valente. And for Nantes, the uh, guy down at TM. And Brown is staying put, isn't he, in the uh, standing contract I would think so. team? For, no, he signed a contract. He's there for next year. Uh, Valentin Guillo is not confirmed yet, is he? So we don't know where he'll be racing. There's Jeffrey Hurlings. That's why we're keeping an eye on this group. Paul. He's coming up to lap those guys. On the final lap as well. So it's going to be win number 20 for Jeffrey Hurlings. And I guess from a manufacturer's point of view, he'll become the 14th KTM winner in the history of this event. So... Uh, Depends whether we come back. We know we're not coming back here next year, but, you know. And uh, what about Netherlands? Jeffrey Hurlings is the only rider previously of the Netherlands to win here as well. That was last year, of course, in MX2. So it's going to be back-to-back -back wins for Jeffrey Hurlings in the uh, MX2 Grand Prix of Sweden. Undefeated in 2014. Undefeated through all of 2013 as well. <laughs> yeah, well, let's That's go back a to long the end run. of uh, 2012 yeah, when he was laid GP. down by the bike. So, a couple of corners to go up on the pegs briefly. Jeffrey Hurlings, a couple of big holes there that he just sidesteps. Downhill for the final time. Jeffrey Hurlings around the back markers. He'll put Golovkin out of his misery. He'll take the checkered flag and light the candles once again. Hurlings, 20 race wins in 2014. A two-time winner here now in Sweden at Udavala, and he wins, what's that, 11 GPs now in the season? So, uh, 
all going swimmingly and to plan for Jeffrey Hernings. And what does that mean in the championship? Well, 544 it was... points. That's 100 and... Ooh. Ahead of Geordie Tixier. Well, it was 130 before race two started. And uh, so he had 132 over Tixier to 135 now. So that's almost three Grand Prix. Well, he, when Tonus was in the game, he was looking at wrapping it up by Lom, and I think he'll probably do it before then. Tixier pleased with that, second place, holding off Dylan Ferrandis for third, and Alexander Tonkov for fourth, Guio fifth, and uh, was that guy set just in sixth place? And we're getting ready for Jeffrey Hurlings. Here he is with Amy Darwin. Thanks, Adam. Many congratulations. You win here again in Sweden. How do you feel about your riding today? Yeah, riding was good. Second motor came out a little bit better with the start and, uh, you know, led every single lap today. So, you know, I'm uh, really happy also for my teammate to be that he's second on the box. He was feeling really ill before. So, you know, we did a great job, another 1-1 one -one and uh, extended our points lead. And, uh, yeah, super happy about the weekend. Well done, Jeffrey. Good Grand Prix once again for Jeffrey Hurlings. The result probably never really in doubt. Of course, uh, double moto victory means 50 points on the board for him. Jordi Tixier, he just alluded to his teammate there, did uh, Jeffrey Hurlings, said that his teammate was feeling really ill before the start of the race. So to come home fourth and second, picking up 40 points and get second overall, well, that's a good day for Tim, uh, for Jordi Tixier. And it's a Red Bull KTM 1-2. Tim Geiser, though, battled hard for the Slovenian and the uh, Gab. Gary Boldy, Honda squad, 37 points on the board for him, third overall, edging out Guillaume and Fevre, but do not take anything away from Jeffrey Hurlings, another perfect score here in Sweden. Confirmation then, race two, Jeffrey Hurlings wins by 42 seconds over Jordi Tixier, Dylan Ferrandis, Alexander Tonkov, Valentin Guio five, Tim Geiser six, Jose Boutron, Christophe Charlier, Jeremy Sewell was ninth, and Sever Yakov, a great ride for him in tenth. Roman Fevre, Paul Jonas, Petar Petrov, Harry Kulas, Julian Lieber, Magni Klingsheim, Damon Graulis, Kei Yamamoto, Luke Stike, Thomas Covington, and behind them, well, you can see the guys didn't score points again, Luke Stike, Maxim Dupre, Covington, Actually, uh, sorry, Covington did score points in the, uh, in the race, but the overall GP classification, Hurlings, Tixier, Geiser, Guio, Fevre, Verandis, Tonkov, Boutron, Charlier, and Siwa. There's your championship. Hurlings, more than 130 points clear now. Tixier has moved up to second. Tonus is third. Fevre, Verandis, Geiser, no change for them. No points for Max Anstey in the second race. Made a bad start as well, so I'm not sure exactly what lap he disappeared. No points for Mel Pocock. Just the one point for Thomas Covington, the American. And a couple of points for Luke Stike. So that would have been 19th for him in moto number two. Manufacturers looks like this. KTM dominating. Almost 100 points clear look over Kawasaki, Husqvarna third, and Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, and TM with just six points. Valentin Quio picked up the Fox Holshot Award on the standing construct KTM. Once again, Casper Leth Christensen of uh, Fox Head. Nordic. The CEO, no less. Boutron, six. Hurlings, five. Quio now on four for the Fox Holshot Award. Well, Monster Girls are in place on the podium. 
So we are getting ready, and I uh, can see Tim Geiser there, 243, the Gary Baldy Honda rider. And third overall for Tim Geiser. And that means that uh, third this week, second last time out, and third in uh, GB. That's three podium visits now for uh, Tim Ge for uh, Tim Geiser. Jordi Tixier, Red Bull KTM, seems suffering a little bit there, not feeling too good. He's second overall this weekend. His teammate, Jeffrey Hurlings, though, another win for him. We're round 12, that's 11 victories for him, because, of course, he was absent in Brazil. So, once again, looking good for Jeffrey Hurlings. Tim Geiser takes third. His trophy delivered by Molly Robertson, president of GFK. Tim Geiser, he's just taking his helmet there, I think he was, wasn't he? Jordi Tixier takes the second place trophy from uh, Joachim Lindrup, the CEO of Kinningsrud. And our overall winner, Jeffrey Hurlings, another podium, another win. And this guy here. Roger Johansson, the CEO of Udavala Energy. Congratulating, uh, congratulating all three riders, Jeffrey Hurlings included, but uh, Jody Tixier there. Loving being on the podium, but you can see from his face, rather be somewhere else trying to hold it all together. Look. This guy here is Swedish, Peter, his surname just forget, uh, forget it at the moment, but used to be Nagel's mechanic. Ian Black, the FIM delegate, handing Jeffrey Hurlings another red plate as he continues to lead, as he has done since 2012, when he was world champion for the first time. Netherlands national anthem for Jeffrey Hurlings. Jeffrey Hurlings, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, wins the MX2 GP of Sweden here at Udavala. Back to back wins now for the Dutchman. To add to the one that he picked up last year, of course, in MX2 as well. Continues to lead the World Championship. It's a Red Bull KTM 1 2 as well. Jordi Tixier coming home second in a final moto to secure that. And Tim Geiser becoming a regular visitor to the MX2 podium now. Third overall for Gary Baldi Honda to add to the second overall that he picked up in Germany earlier on this season, or two weeks ago actually.
Right, Amy Dargan is down by the winner's circle, just behind the skybox and the podium area. She's getting ready to speak to our winner, Jeffrey Hurlings. And of course, after that, it will be Geordie Tixier and Tim Geiser. Here's Amy Dargan. Jeffrey Hurlings, your winner this weekend. Jeffrey Hurlings, many congratulations. On a super fast track, you managed to lap up to 18th. What was the key to not getting caught out? I mean, you know, always a starter ski, especially on the racetracks from lately, they're so fast. So, you know, start out front and uh, made life easy, and uh, I think that was the key. So, uh, we really enjoyed it today. You know, uh, riding felt really good, really strong, and uh, I'm feeling so good at the moment. So, hope to keep this rhythm going. And, you know, closer, I, I get closer and closer to my third world title, so I'm really excited for that. And uh, keep on charging, and, uh, you know, hopefully next week win another one in Finland. Well done, we'll see you next weekend in Finland. And second overall, Geordie Tixier, despite being sick this weekend, you seem to be doing enough over these last few Grand Prix, or more than enough, to really put yourself there in the shop window for perhaps any teams that might be looking next year. Yeah, you know, uh, the second race was the rougher uh, race of my life. Uh, yesterday I felt pretty good, and also this morning, but the first race, I was struggling on moto and uh, just before the second moto I get really sick. I was like so-called pain to my head, pain to my stomach and uh, no power on the bike. But uh, I have to push through the wall and uh, I did a good start and I tried to follow Jeffrey to make a gap. And that's what I did and uh, finish second of the day just pretty good, you know. He's just pretty happy and uh, thanks a lot to all KTM Red Bull Factory team, my family, my father, my mother, my brother, my girlfriend all my fans around me and uh, thanks a lot everybody. Thanks Shorty, well done for this podium and third overall this weekend, Tim Geiser. Tim, this podium thing is becoming a bit of a regular thing. Um, it was really great to see you out there trying to find new lines, not following the pack. Do you think that's what helps make you um, make those passes? Yeah, definitely because you never, you cannot never follow the, uh, the rider in front of you because uh, maybe he crashed so you can crash also. So yeah, it's better to find some new lines and uh, yeah, try to make clean pass, not the dirty, so yeah. It seemed that in race two you didn't quite have the same speed you had in race one. Yeah, in the first race I uh, started somewhere around sixth place and then make some nice passes and finish second, so it was great. In the second race I have a little bit better start, but uh, I go too much white, so many riders pass me from inside and then uh, I think I finish sixth, so yeah, not so bad. And, third overall, so I'm really happy about that. Well done, it's great to see you back on the podium. We'll see you next time in Finland. Jeffrey Hurlings then, undefeated so far in 2014. In every GP that he's raced. Jordi Tixier on the podium now. The last four GPs. And Tim Geisep, his third Grand Prix visit in 2014, as we said, becoming a regular. But that's all we've got time for here from MX2. I hope you can join us for more MX2 action in Finland in a week's time, but we'll be back in just a moment with MXGP Race 2 in the concluding part of the MXGP of Sweden. Don't go away.